This podcast is brought to you by Onnit. Go to Onnit.com and look at the great selection of supplements. If you find something you like, press in code Joey and get 10% off delivered right to your house. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Monday, February the 5th. The joint is brought to you by Rocket Money. How much are you paying for all your subscriptions? You don't even know. You could be wasting hundreds of dollars each month on subscriptions you don't even know about or you forgot about. That's why I love Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. Listen, I've already gotten thanks from people that already download the app and they love it because the app will show you all your subscriptions in one place, cancels whatever ones you don't want, and reminds you the ones you have. Rocket Money can even find you ones you didn't even know you were paying for. You may even find out you've been double charged. To cancel a subscription, just press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. It's that easy. So get rid of useless subscriptions, save money with Rocket Money now. Now, go to rocketmoney.com slash Joey. Seriously, if I could save you a couple hundred dollars a year, you will love your uncle even more. So do me a favor. Rocketmoney.com slash Joey. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions. Save some money and let rocketmoney.com slash Joey do the rest. Again, rocketmoney.com slash Joey. You're going to love me for this. The joint is also brought to you by, oh my goodness, DraftKings. Listen, two title fights, one epic night. I'm talking about UFC 284, and that's just Saturday. You got Michael Shaw fighting Volonovsky, all right? And then we're going to roll right into Sunday with the fucking Super Bowl. Join the MMA action with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the UFC. New customers, listen, $5.00. And you're going to get 200 in bonus bets just like that. Listen, I love this card. There's a lot of great fights on this card. A lot of fighter props. Fighter props on this card. So take a look. And don't forget that the big game is Sunday, the following day. So it's going to be a great weekend. But it starts with you. Download the app now. Use code Joey. And new customers bet $5 on UFC 284 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. This Saturday, DraftKings Sportsbook with code Joey. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Let's get this party started. Monday morning, I got shit to do. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Uncle Joey here for another fun-filled Monday morning motivation fucking podcast. That's a lot of words just to get started in this motherfucker. <laughs> Everything's beautiful. It's February 5th. Fucking uh, the penguins have finally showed up in New Jersey. You know, I love, I, I just love people, how fucking dumb we are. You know, a fighter wins a fight and oh, he's back. You know, I remember it was, there was two games during football season, there were two games that just passed, and Dallas had won that Sunday. And I was at the gym Monday, and they're already like, "Is the Dallas Cowboys a, a Super Bowl contender? Why are we talking about this? Because they won one game. We are so impressed with the dumbest shit as Americans. Listen, I grew up on the East Coast, and I know one thing for sure. We're going to get 100 inches of snow. When that's going to come, nobody knows, but it's coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, I already saw people, it was like 62 days last week, and people like, oh, fucking Indian this, the, the stars, relax, cocksucker. February is coming, and what happened on fucking Thursday? It dropped to five. I went to Pennsylvania 
it was five degrees and 10 with the fucking wind chill, okay? Where's everybody with their bikini now with the Indian summers, you know? Boy, we're fucking retarded. Now it's going to warm up again, and they're already jumping up and down again. Oh, by Wednesday, it's going to be 60. Bitch, February 19th is around the corner. And let me tell you something I know for a fact. I don't know much about global warming. I don't know what the fuck's going on with the climate. I don't know about Greta Thunberg. I have no fucking idea of the balloon from China. You know, what the fuck? All I do know is that every year when I was growing up, there was always snow on the ground February 19th, except two years ago. There wasn't snow here. But times are changing. But it's still going to fucking be colder than a motherfucker. So before you bust out your little bit, look at Texas. Texas was freezing last fucking week. They had to cancel one of the basketball games because the, the, the fucking team couldn't get out of that. When a team can't get out of a city, what does that fucking tell you? Shit's fucking gone wild in that motherfucker. But that's it. It's February. I'm excited. I'm done with the residency till fucking God knows when. We're just working on the book now, and hopefully uh, that'll make a splash when it comes out April 23rd. What I want to talk about this week, you know, every week you get thrown so much fucking news, you know, like every week. You start on Monday, and it's shit that you don't expect, Governor Santos, this, that. And it's shit that when you think about it, it doesn't matter to you at all. That's why I kind of gave up. I'm not good with current affairs because current affairs because it just doesn't matter no more. Every week is more and more bullshit. And if you go into it, you know, Tim Allen showing his dick. Fucking now I got to listen to fucking Baywatch all week. I don't want to, you know, so you just avoid all that shit. I didn't see the documentary. I tried to put it on for three minutes and I, I can't watch this shit. And I like Pamela Anderson. I think we've all whacked off to at one point in our lives. I remember I was in county jail in Seattle banging them out to a picture of Pamela Anderson. But what the fuck? We're just being honest on a Monday morning. But the news that struck me weird this week, and only one other person called me with it and said, this is fucked up was Ozzy Osbourne. I don't know if you guys realize what that meant with Ozzy Osbourne saying, I can't do it no more. It's the beginning of the end. It's the beginning of the end. You know, and guys, you know I love Ozzy Osbourne. Over the years, you you grow up and you fucking get into this and you get into this and this and this, but like you lose a lot of shit that you ever put on album on when you were a kid and you really want it to work, but you're like, this just doesn't work in my life anymore. I don't know. I could, yeah, we just grow up out of some music. Some music stays with you forever. Some music I get pissed off that I still listen to. Like, Joey, what the fuck? Grow the fuck up. You know, listen to something different. And I try, you know. But our taste change. My taste have never changed with Ozzy Osbourne. Like, when I'm driving and I hear an old Ozzy song or a Black Sabbath song, it's just like, listen, Crazy Train, you know, whatever. But there's some other jams in there in between Ozzy's Boneyard plays that it stops me sometimes. You know, because 20 years ago when I was growing up, they wouldn't play fucking Black Sabbath on the radio at all. At all. Not even War Pigs. Then Ozzy's, what do you think Ozzy started that fucking station? Nobody played his goddamn music. Grew up, you you would never hear any fucking Black Sabbath on the radio. But it's funny how, you know, guys, I saw this comedy boom grow. And I saw the reaction that people, young adults, you know, adults of all ages responded to the podcast, which created a different type of admiration from people. Now, it made it simpler for you to either like them or not like them. When I was growing up and I'd watch... Uh, I don't know, some fucking comedian, uh, Freddie Prince. I knew he was Puerto Rican. I knew he was from the Bronx, but I didn't know he played with guns. I didn't know he did blow. I didn't know he was going through all that. If he had a podcast, we would have known, and things would have been different. Richard Pryor, you know, because what the podcast opened up was how we feel about things, opinions. We open up some podcasters, open up their family. When I first started doing a podcast, I, I got to tell you this, uh, I don't know, like maybe two years into the church podcast, a kid moved from like, I don't know, some other state to California. He wanted to hook up with me. 
And I was like, dog, what do you want to talk about? And he wanted, he was aspiring to be a comedian. And I go, listen, I'm at the store right now. You know, I'm at the fucking, I'm not hard to find. I'm at the store. He's like, no, 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 no. I want to see you in North Hollywood in the daytime. I go, you know, I'm, I'm fucking busy. I got the kid. I got the podcast. I'm doing stupid shit. I'm going to fucking meetings to sell a show. You know, when I lived there, my schedule was all over the fucking place. So I said, just go to the fucking store. No, I would go to a weed store and they'd say, some guy was here for an hour waiting for you. <laughs> and I'd go to a fucking, oh my God, there was places I could just go and he would just leave. Uh, some guy was here waiting for you. He thinks you come over here, eat Mexican all the time. This happened at like three or four places. Meanwhile, I'm corresponding with the guy. The guy is basically living a mile from me in North Hollywood. I'm corresponding with him. And every fucking day, he's like, ah. and then one day he just went off on me. I don't want to go to a fucking store. You know, I don't like audiences. Then what are we talking about here? He went off on me, you know? And, I, and then he wrote me like a touching note. He goes, you don't understand. I don't want nothing from you. You know, this is the beginning of the podcast, boom, guys. And all of a sudden, people are knocking on your door and people sending you emails that, you know, we didn't know what, you know, we came from a fucking stand-up comedy where nobody talked to you. I did a million shows and not one person ever came up to me and said, hey, great show or, you know, you're going to be a star or nothing. Nobody ever talked to me. Now everybody wanted to talk to you. So you're like, what the fuck is going on? So I didn't know how to react to this kid. I'll never forget that he wrote me this fucking note. And this is embarrassing, but I'll tell you guys. And because I, this is how I related at the time. He goes, you know, I just really wanted to meet you and stuff. And I thought about his story and I go, listen, bro. If you would have said that in the beginning, I thought you wanted to talk about stand-up comedy. I, I didn't know what the fuck you wanted to talk about. And he's like, you know, he just wrote a bunch of flattering stuff. You know, that I was like, what the fuck? Is this what a podcast does? And I finally said, I wrote him a, a note. And I go, listen, we could hook up tomorrow at such and such time. I didn't know that. I go, I get what you're saying to me. I go... You lost a parent. He was in the same position as me. He lost a parent, and I spoke about losing a parent, and he connected. And I go, you know, it's sort of like when I was a kid, how I connected with Ozzy Osbourne for some reason. I don't know. I connected with Ozzy when I saw him on stage, and then I went home and listened to him. We'll get to that story, but I get it. I get it. And he wrote back, you ain't no Ozzy Osbourne. Like, I didn't paraphrase it like I was Ozzy I go now I understand where you're coming from you're relating to me because of a death or something like that and that's you know I was a kid I was into the doors I was into Ted Nugent and it took me a long time to get into that music because they had long hair and I was scared of people with long hair at the time I was a young Cuban Catholic and you know and if I did like them I would fucking not say nothing to anybody and then Zeppelin came into my life when I was like, you know, I'm out there playing basketball at 10 and I'm hearing Black Dog. When you hear Black Dog when you're 10 years old in the summer when you're drinking an orange drink, you're like, what the fuck? Even put on Black Dog today. And you're like, what is this? But hold on. Let me paraphort. Let me fucking uh, get one of those goggles and transport yourself to 1973 when this song came out. You had never heard anything like that. And he, you know, you knew he was trying to get his dick sucked in the song. You know, you just knew as a 10-year-old, you're like, it excited you. I love Led Zeppelin, but I never got, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. All I know is I had Zeppelin two. I had a couple of Yes albums. You know, I liked Fragile. I liked Yes Over the Edge. I had The Doors. I had the song remains the same. I had Led Zeppelin two, Led Zeppelin three, and I had presents. You know, I was just getting my shit going. You know what I'm saying? I had Double Live Gonzo. I had Cat Scratch Fever. I had Hotel California. These were, you know, 1975 this is what you had in your house. I liked the Eagles. I fucking loved the Eagles. I liked the uh, uh, one of these nights. I think it's a tremendous jam. And then it, that album was followed by. Hotel California, so I kind of like the Eagles, and one day I'm at the fucking uh, courts or whatever, and I hear, you know, the beginning to War Pig, you know, and I tell you, when you hear War Pigs for the first time, when once they get into the guitar, y you want to lose your fucking mind, like you run to the record store, 
You know what I'm saying? I don't know. There's something about war pigs. You know, there's something about fucking war pigs. And then you bring the album home and it's electric funeral. That's a little fucking scary. Some guy, electric funeral. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you know, electric funeral. What am I getting electrocuted tonight? You got fucking, uh, uh, my favorite song on the album is what you gonna do. Time's caught up with you. It That's as real as it gets. At that age, I liked the Stones. I'd get your yayas out. I'd miss you. No, I didn't. I, I think I had it. It's only rock and roll at that time. Miss you didn't come out till '78 or something like that. And I, I don't know. Maybe in the eighth grade, I heard Black Sabbath on the courts, and I was like, "This is pretty fucking good." But I'm a Catholic. You know what I'm saying? He's over there talking about Satan spreading his wings. It's okay till Satan spread his motherfucking wings. Okay. Then it was all over. And then I started smoking pot and blah, 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 blah. And I don't know. I heard it again. And I borrowed it from somebody. I think maybe Steve Avillo, one of my friends Avillo, from the Past Masters, I borrowed it. And when I heard Paranoid, after fucking War Pigs, and I heard all that music, I was like, this is fucking pretty good. But I'm still into the Eagles. I'm still into Zeppelin. I'm going to keep these motherfuckers in the back burner. You know what I'm saying? This is still a little out there for me. And then I get to freshman year, and yeah, I don't know. They're bullshitting about something on the bus. They're going to go see Black Sabbath. And I go, yeah, I kind of like them. You know? I mean, you know, at that age, I didn't know their whole fucking... I liked War Pigs, and I liked Paranoid. And I said, fuck it, and... uh me and some people from downtown. To this day, I know who I saw there at the concert. The garden was filled with fucking North Bergen people. And I, but I still to this day, I forget who the fuck I walked into that place with. The rumor was you had to get there early because the warm up band was going to be tremendous. The warm up band was Van Halen. And fucking, you know, I walked in there, guys. I didn't know shit. I had been to one concert before that. It was maybe Ted Nugent with Aerosmith at the Meadowlands outside. It was like one of those all-day concerts. Fucking Aerosmith busted their guitars. It was not, you know, we walked home. When I walked in there, first of all, the electricity from Van Halen, and I didn't know who Eddie Van Halen was. I could sit here and tell you, oh, I was ready. I knew eruption. I didn't know dick. So think about how I felt when I saw fucking eruption up there. We maybe smoked a few joints. I don't know if I did acid or anything at that point. I was still a little half a fag. I, I still had to put Visine in my eyes when I went home and cologne. And mm -hmm. I don't know what I did, but I remember that Black Sabbath came on, and I didn't know what sounded good and what didn't sound good. I just knew that some of their instruments were off. Like I could hear like guitars, strings popping, and you know it just wasn't. And I could see the drummer snorting coke. Bill Ward was snorting coke from the snare drum. Right on that, that not that snare drum. But, and I was like, wow, this is fucking great. So we left that show, and the next day I went to North Bergen, and on the way home I would walk on Bergen Line and pick up the album of the week, and I picked up fucking Paranoid. And lights out. Guys, lights out. What he was talking about, I fucking liked. I didn't know what he was talking about. I know that the one jam I like, it's about heroin. And, uh... You know, I didn't know anything else about them at the time. It was maybe October of 78. I think they did October 18th or something like that. Check it out. I don't know. And then I bought the second album I bought because I, I, I said, fuck it. I like this band. I'm not going to do what I did with the rest of my uh, album career. I'm going to start from scratch. You know, because like with the Stones, I started with like, it's only rock and roll, get your yayas out. The way to do it is from the fucking beginning. And then you just, I didn't like the early Stones. I didn't catch on till, I mean, I like it, you know, 19 Nervous Breakdown, all that shit, but you know what I mean. I liked that to fucking like uh, Goat's Head Soup and all that when they got down and dirty. When I put, when I put that Black Sabbath album on, when I heard the first song, Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath, I turned that motherfucker off. I turned that motherfucker off. I was like, this ain't for Uncle Joey. What is this that stands before me, figure in black, pointing at me? This is not going to work in my world. 
and I think I moved on to The Wizard because The Wizard was kind of a popular song and everybody in your neighborhood wanted to be a fucking wizard, you know. So The Wizard was it, and I guess that was my, I liked the album. And then I said, fuck it, let me put on Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. And then I just, I was like, okay. And that was by the summer. I had rented a house down the shore with two of my buddies and two girl, three girls from high school. We weren't dating them. We, they were next door to us, and we rented this house. And I bought that fucking Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath on 8-track. And I still remember the fucking player I had. It's the first 8-track player I had that I put Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon which was the first album I ever tripped on. But that's a complete different fucking mm -hmm. story, all right? When I came back from down the shore, I was all in on Black Sabbath, the first album, and I was all in on Paranoid. So I said, what's my next logical move? I don't know. I didn't even, you know, there was no internet. It was Nike. You couldn't Wikipedia what the name of their albums were in, in alphabetical order or whatever, how they came out. And I didn't feel like fucking asking people because people would, in my town would go, what the fuck are you talking about? Don't you have all their albums? What are you, a pussy? What are you listening to, fucking ABBA? And I'm like, you know, okay. So I had to figure it out on my own, and I didn't know who to ask. And one day I went to that same fucking album place, and I bought fucking Sabotage. And I brought that motherfucker home. And it just opened me the fuck up. Ozzy was tremendous. The lyrics were great. They have an acoustic part on fucking Symptom of the Universe. And I, it just, it's just a great album. Megalomania, the thrill of it all, the writ, the writ is fucking scary as fuck. Am I going insane? And I was all in, motherfuckers. I was like, wow, this is fucking deep. And then I went back and I bought Never Say Die. Again, I went out of order again. And I bought the last album, and when I fucking listened to Never Say Die, I was all in. Like, that's my new slogan, Never Say Die. I was fucking 14, 15, I was very, uh, I was looking. I didn't have a father figure, so I was looking, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying Ozzy was my father figure, but I'm just saying that this album just blew me the fuck apart. And then something happened. I, I got into Never Say Die. Junior's Eyes, you know, Johnny Blade, fucking, that album has a lot of good songs on it. But at the same time, I was putting on different things every fucking day. And then the, the next album I bought was the one that put me over the fucking top, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. That song just took me from point A to fucking point B. Something about Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, it was describing what I was going through at the time. I, and I, I don't know. It was all going on inside of me. I, was, I didn't want to live at home. You know, who the fuck knows? But I don't know. It got to me, this album. And then my mother died. And when my mother died, the albums I had on the, that I was listening to all the time was the last Led Zeppelin album and uh, the Cars Candy O. That was the rotation I had at that time and Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. And then when my mother died, when I went home, I didn't want to put that fucking devil music on. I was like, I'm going to stay away from this devil music on. I moved in with the Benders, and about two months later, I started listening to Sabbath again. And I was fucked up by then. So now it just gripped me, guys. It gripped me in a way that... It was all I was living for. It was Black Black Sabbath was basically keeping me the fuck alive, as stupid as this fucking sounds. As stupid as this sounds. And one day, I was walking with Louis Castellito, a couple of us, it was cold out, it was, it was about the end of January, and I walked into a magazine place, and Cream Magazine was there. Cream was like, you know, Rolling Stone's answer to heavy metal. And the fucking next thing you know, I open up the thing, and it's official. Black Sabbath broke up. And I'm like, fuck. I really wanted them to see him again. Because I had seen him, but I wasn't prepared. And I really liked him. You know, I really liked what they were doing. And they broke up. And guys, I was, like, heartbroken. Like a fucking child. Like a fucking child. I was really fucking heartbroken. And I went that year before my birthday, I went... And I went up to this bar on 22nd and New York Avenue. It used to be across from the, the county morgue there. 
It's a funeral parlor. That's where they take you when you die. Then they disperse you to either Veneris or Macagna or whatever. There used to be a bar there. We used to get THC crystal in that motherfucker, a.k.a. Angel Dust. On Tuesday nights, they had an Angel Dust happy hour. I will <laughs> never fucking forget that. And I went down there with a bunch of savages, and we bought like two two tens of, tea, of uh, Angel Dust, which we call crystal. And I'll never forget, I did two lines. I wasn't even living at home. I was living with the Benders. And they weren't home, and I remember going in, putting Master Reality on. That's the name of the album, the third album. Putting it on, and for some reason, I was going through the channels, and The Exorcist was on. Meanwhile, I'm tripping on fucking angel dust, and I'm looking at fucking The Exorcist, and I'm hearing Black Sabbath in the back. Have you ever thought about your soul? Can it be saved? And, you know, the Pope dead on a rope and all this shit. And I'm like, fuck this album. The only thing I liked off of three was Sweet Leaf. I was like, I ain't listening to this fucking devil me. And I like Tomorrow's Dream, I think, is on three. But no, Tomorrow's Dream is on volume four. I said, fuck this shit. I ain't putting this shit back on. This is too dark for me. I'll keep it going with Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. At the time, I was going through a war with my father. Now, with my stepfather. So now, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath was my anthem every fucking morning. I was going to kill this motherfucker. I didn't know how. I was trying to rob him. I was trying to do everything I can to knock him off his game. But I was fucking wounded. I was walking fucking wounded. And... uh you know, that's, uh, guys, I don't know, I'm mentally weak at that time. I was regressing, you know, after when you're a young child and you see some type of trauma, you know, you regress or stay at that age until you come to terms with that trauma. So I fucking, I, you know, and I learned this now, and now it makes it a lot easier for for me to understand what was going on when I was 15 and my mother died 16 and I tell you guys, I, I'm fucking Ozzy, I don't know what the fuck to say, you know. But I'm listening to Aerosmith. I'm listening to all this shit. Plus, Pink Floyd the Wall had taken over. When Pink Floyd the Wall came out on November 28th of 1979, that shit came out like a bullet, and it cemented himself. You couldn't. I remember going to Paramus Mall and listening to Pink Floyd the Wall in every store. Please, teacher, leave those kids alone. And it was on the radio which was never done before with Pink Floyd except for money and that one fucking jam. So I'm like, wow, okay, blah, 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 blah. And fucking John Lennon dies. John Lennon dies. I think I hit acid one night, Monday night football, he dies. Tuesday, the city shuts down. They say that on Sunday they're going to have a, uh, uh, a memorial for John Lennon at Strawberry Fields. They're going to do all this shit. They're going to lock down New York. And I just happened to go. And I go, I don't want to go into Central Park. If it's going to be jammed, fuck it. I'll go down to the village and see what's happening. In those days, the village was a little fr freer, you know. And I remember going down there and seeing the store bleak of fucking Bob's and just going in there to buy like a Blue Oyster Cult album. I wanted to buy like a Blue Oyster Cult album. I'll never forget this. The live one. They have a live album that's really fucking good. Mm -hmm. Godzilla, Don't Feel the Reaper. It was like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't, that, that's not on there. No, that was not that. That came out after they got popular from that because they went on tour with Black Sabbath with Ronnie James Dio, and it was called the Black and Blue Tour. A lot of people don't remember this shit. Monday morning, cocksuckers. We're dropping knowledge here. <clears throat> Before we drop any more knowledge, I'm going to cut over to an ad for better help. Dig it. What's up? I want to talk to you about better help. When you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. Therapy can get you to that place. How do I know? Because when I got off the plane here, I was a Momo in Jersey. I didn't know what was going on. I was confused. And I somebody referred therapy to me, and they referred better help. And I signed up, and Dana has helped me tremendously. Better help is therapy option that is convenient, flexible, affordable and entirely online you fill out a brief questionnaire you get matched with a licensed therapist and you switch therapists anytime for no additional cost okay it couldn't be that much easier so do me a favor if you're stuck on something if you feel that you're not there at this point in your life contact betterhelp.com 
If you want to live more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com. Enter code Diaz, D-I-A-Z, and get 10% off your first month. You'll have somebody to talk to within 48 hours, I promise you. You fill the questionnaire out, be honest, they'll match you with the therapist, and you'll be fine in tip-top magoo. I was with them for a while, and uh, I was talking to Dana every two weeks, and it really, really helped. So, that's BetterHelp.com slash Diaz. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Dot com slash Diaz. And now, back to the podcast. All right, we're back. I hope you contact BetterHelp if you're having some uh, confusion in your life. You don't know what's going on. They'll always help you out. Anyway, back to Ozzy Osbourne here. So, I uh, go into the fucking village. And I'm looking through album covers. And I don't know what the fuck I'm buying. I'm looking for Blue Oyster Cult. And right fucking there. It said Ozzy. And I go, because ah, blue is right next to black, you know, before. So they had black, and then they had blue oyster cult. And then as I was walking down, it had Ozzy, just playing Ozzy. I go, what the fuck is this? And I pull out a four song EP. And I'm looking at it, and it's Ozzy Osbourne on the cover with the fucking jacket on, with. The wings coming over, <laughs> fucking Rudy Sarzo on the side. Not really. At the time, it was the different bass player. And then it was Randy on the side, and the old man drummer was on the back. He was like 100, that dude. Yeah. He's still around. <laughs> and I remember looking at it, and guys, I was there for John Lennon and Blue Oyster Cult, and I just bumped into my fucking treasure. Every feeling in my body just dumped out. It was just four songs. Mr. Crowley... I don't know, a suicide solution, and something else. That that was the first four song EP from fucking uh, Fuck Nuts. So it sent me over, guys. I was so fucking ecstatic. And then a couple weeks later, the album came out, and I was fucking going off. But if Ozzy hadn't connected with me before, he had connected with me on this album with the Blizzard. God, and again, I feel fucking like a weakling telling you this story, but it's the truth. I, I didn't have anything else. This was all that was keeping me together. On that album, he put out two songs that really fucking stuck with me. One is Mother Revelation, Mother Earth. I just lost my mother, and this guy's talking about a mother. Not only that, Pink Floyd's got a song on the wall about mother. So it was a tough year for Uncle Joey with mothers, right? Everybody's coming out with mother, mother, mother. And I'm missing my mother. But Ozzy's mother revelation hit home. But the song that fucking destroyed me on that is I Don't Know. They have a verse and I don't know that whenever I'm a little depressed, I still fucking sing it in my heart. And it's nobody ever told me. I found out for myself. You got to believe in foolish miracles. It's not how you play the game. It's if you win or lose. You can't choose. That Those words right there, don't confuse Win or lose, it's up to you. That has carried me for fucking 40 fucking years. Those words are so fucking powerful in that song that, and, you know, hearing Randy on the guitar, when Ozzy came back with that band, it was the most exciting fucking thing that happened since Leonard Skinner died. And then Bon Scott died. So the the community was a little low. When Ozzy came back out with that album, guys, you know, I wish you could have remembered it. It just, it took everything down. It was game over. Van Halen was done. Van Halen came out with Van Halen 2. Everybody had to step aside for that fir fir first fucking Ozzy album. Everybody. And it was growing. I mean, it was in every magazine. Now they were everywhere. Rolling Stone, Cream, they were fucking taking over. And I read about what happened. You know, like, I want to know what happened. Again, there's no fucking internet, guys. Today, you go on there and find anything you want. To. Back then, when I was a kid, there was no fucking internet. But from reading, you know, I read that they threw him out of the band, you know, for his drug use, which I'm like, fuck, I can't wait to get older. So when I'm in a band, I get thrown out for drug use. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just related to this fucking mook, you know? And 
guys, I saw them with uh, Sabbath, and then tickets went on sale for fucking the Palladium with Randy Rhodes, Rudy Sarzo, the drummer, and fucking Ozzy Osbourne, and I think 40 of us went. We were maybe sophomores in high school, juniors. 40 of us motherfuckers went, and another 40 motherfuckers from North Bergen were there, the older guys. And he came out and destroyed that fucking room. I still, he opened up with, mm, dun, ta -ga -ta -ga -ta -ga -ta -ga -ta 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 and the place just fucking, just erupted, guys. And he did two shows. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He fucking came out with it. And the best thing was, at that time, he still wasn't fucking with Sabbath. Like, he was not doing any fucking Sabbath at all. He was just doing straight up fucking that album. You know, it was tremendous. The night I saw him, you know, I don't remember if he did Sabbath. I could be wrong. There was a lot of drugs that night. You understand me? We were in the acidic state of mind. But he was also pushing the blizzard of Oz. Now, Ozzy had threatened, like in 75, to leave Sabbath. Or maybe he did leave Sabbath, and he started a band called the Blizzard of Oz that was short-lived. For years, I saw all those pictures with him with Blizzard, the Blizzard. Guys, that was my... Again, I'm not going to be like one of these guys that sues the cigarette company after they smoked all their life and they get cancer. If I had any doubts about not doing coke... Ozzy erased that shit. Like, he was he was my fuck. I still remember being in a cemetery with my friend Carlos and laying, getting sun in a cemetery and snorting bumps just because of lying snow blind in the sun. Soon my ice age yet to come. I mean, guys, I'm a fucking geek, okay? I'm a drug geek, and he just lit that fucking match for me. You know, it was like the first time you listened to Bitch Girl, by Hall and Oates, yeah. Rich Girl. Rich when you're when you're in the sixth grade and that song came on, you lost your mind. You know why? Because he said the word bitch. Yeah. You're a child. He said bitch. You know, I remember when Chuck Barry came out with My ding -a and we were like in the fifth grade. We Everybody bought My ding -a -ling. Ask me where My ding -a -ling is today. I don't even want to see that fucking album. It's a horrible album, but... You're young, and you're you're uh, very, you know, you fall for that shit. And I fell for it. Like, I loved. But there was a lot of shit about Ozzy that I liked early on that a lot of people didn't know I liked. I wasn't just a fan of his because of drugs. He can't. He's not a great singer. Doesn't have. Doesn't have a lot of. Doesn't have a lot of range. You know, if you watch Ozzy, there was just something about him. You know, there's some people who are tremendous fucking singers, and they got a whole career going. Fucking Rob Halford, that motherfucker could sing since day one. Not for everybody's taste, but he could sing. You know, Pat Benatar could sing, not just rock. That bitch used to be an opera singer. She could mm -hmm. fucking sing. Ozzy was always like, if, you know, you rate Ozzy as a singer. He's a fucking six. But his fucking story, his fucking story is beautiful. You know, that neighborhood, Birmingham, England, that ain't no fucking... That ain't no Beverly Hills. That is not Beverly Hills. And them and Judas Priest came out of Birmingham, England. You know, and they fucking, all those motherfucking bands, they're, they're savages. Those people are savages. They eat toenails. You saw what he was doing. He was fucking licking piss off the floor. Ozzy was a fucking savage. And after a while, yes, you know, it went somewhere else. He bought, he bit the head off the pigeon. That's not my world. <laughs> That's not my world. I ain't biting no fucking head off no pigeon. But... You know, he, when the story got, listen, Sabotage is such a great album because they were furious. Their story goes that they were just getting ripped off by the music label. You know, did you just hear this week or two weeks ago? John Fogarty just got the rights back to his music. That's fucking huge. That's huge. That They were at war. It doesn't really matter. What I'm trying to say is that the 70s and 60s in rock music, it was a fucking free-for-all. It was a steel fest. Led Zeppelin was making boxes of fucking money. And they did, dictated the market. How they didn't get charged for tax fraud and all that shit in the 70s. I read the books. I got 10 Led Zeppelin books. Bob Lingus has sent me. They were making boxes of money. God knows what Peter Grant was fucking stealing. Yeah. You know, and Sharon, Sharon Osbourne's father was the original 
manager to Black Sabbath. He had that label in England or whatever. And he was robbing them blind. They had no fucking money. And Sabotage, they were on the road for like three years. They had no money. No money. Gangster, no money. Like, not like, well, we'll send you a report. No, they had no money. Like, we gave you 28 balls. Like, that's what they were doing to these guys. It was fucking rough. And when you do, like, as a civilian at that time, I didn't feel the pain. But once I became a comic, I'm like, fuck, I know exactly what that feels like. There's people who run these contracts, and they tell you they're going to pay you this amount. And then you don't get another dime throughout the rest of the fucking, they keep it all. But meanwhile, they're telling you, oh, yeah, you'll get a check once a fucking month. They robbed those guys. When Sharon found Ozzy, this motherfucker was living on top of the liquor store on Sunset Boulevard in a one-bedroom apartment. They wanted to get rid of him. They're like, he's, he, he's done. They wrote him the fuck off, guys. When I found these stories out, like in 82, 83, when I started, more shit started coming out, I was blown the fuck away. He was one of the top singers in the top band, nine fucking albums, and this guy was broke, living on top of that, I forget the liquor store name. Like, it's a pop, Herbs or something. It's a popular liquor store. Hey, this motherfucker was living up there with Ugats. Nothing. She's the one that fucking got him up and said, uh, you know, get up. That's why when you see her, I give her all the credit in the fucking world. She fucking brought a, a dead man back to life. She really fucking did. You see what he did. He just didn't come back with a great album. He came back with two or three great fucking albums. And then the guy died. Then he replaced him. Then he started fucking, he put a festival together. He put a badass fucking festival together. This guy took the ball and ran, guys. Then they started reality TV. Then they started reality TV. I mean, guys, he was at the forefront, and it was all her. You know, and in a way, you look at him, and you're like, you know, he's just a fucking mook. You know, they just pull him by a fucking string, keep giving him fucking pills. He's one of those guys that for years, they argue, is he sober, is he not sober? Dog, let me tell you something. Guys like that, those geezers from the 70s, they'll never be sober. I deal with an uncle right now. The guy that was my best man. This motherfucker's always got something on him. And he'll tell you I'm sober. Because for them, they're sober. For them, they're fucking sober. So for everybody else, you're like, he's still eating pills. Nah, I'm sober. Compared to what I was doing, six, eight balls, a bottle of vodka, a bottle of tranquilizers, fucking gorilla biscuits. I'm sober. And I get that with him. But I've always respected the fuck out of him. And this week, and it was weird because one of my guys on Patreon hit me up. And he's like, describe the Black Sabbath concert for me, the first one you went to. And I'm like, this is the weirdest thing in the world. And then the next day was when Ozzy came out and goes, I saw the video. When I looked at the fucking video, it broke my heart. He gave it his all. Nobody ever thought that dude would still be alive. Nobody. Including me. I was like, that motherfucker's going to die from all the cocaine use and shit. That cocaine use made him and Keith Richards tougher than fuck. And just the fact that these guys, this is why somebody told me this a couple of years ago. I think it was Rudy Sarzo who said, the legends are going back on the road. This is your time to go see them. This is your time to go see them. If you ever had to really, really want to go see somebody for the last time, whatever. Because you don't want to fucking... I know I, I wanted to see Ozzy again. I didn't know how I was going to see him, but he might do like a residency. That's what they're pushing for. He's not going to quit live performing. He, he could still sing. He just doesn't want to fucking travel. Hello? Would you want to fucking travel? You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's going to be interesting where this goes. But just the summer's coming. I know a lot. I know next week, right down, right down the corner, it's Motley Crue. At the Hard Rock, yeah. where we went to see Rogan. Yeah, it's Motley Crue with Def Leppard. You know, these guys aren't going away. And, you know, you sit there and you go, do I really want to pay 200 bucks to see Def Leppard? I didn't two weeks ago. But now, I think I want to go see these guys one last time. I grew up on this fucking music, guys. You know, concerts have changed a lot. You know, I see these Post Malone shows and shit like that. Fuck that. I would never go to those things, you know. But I still want to see some old fucking rockers. I really wanted to see Aerosmith in Vegas. I think that's a tremendous residency. Anybody who's gone to see it, it says it's fucking tremendous. Uh, he might be done. 
You know, he might be done, Steven Tyler. Guys, it's fucking tough. I asked, uh, I knew this testosterone doctor in L.A., and I asked him, you know, who he, who his number one patients were. And he was, I thought it was, was it actors or football players? And he told me that it was musicians. We didn't get into particulars, but he, but I, when I went to his wedding, the guy from Bush was there with, she was still married to Gwen Stefani. So when I went to this doctor's wedding, I saw them there and a couple other people. I didn't really know who they were. They all had fancy hair and blue hair and shit. But I know he had a couple bands. So I asked him, why do the musicians shoot? Now, I'm not saying Ozzy shot. I'm just telling you what is the protocol right now. First off, these older bands, they only do three shows a week. That's all they can handle. And they take a night off in between. And I don't know if you guys ever saw the Alex Rodriguez testosterone thing. Alex Rodriguez would take a gummy in the sixth inning. A testosterone gummy. They made a testosterone gummy for him. So he would come alive in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. So, and then when he got off stage, it was such a light boost that it wouldn't appear in his urine or something. They'd, they'd do something. That's what he was telling me they're doing with the rock stars. They do the testosterone a little bit before the show or that morning and then uh, like 30 minutes into the show, they give the drummer a solo and they all go back there. They take a fucking shot and they go out to the... And that's what... Dog, I can't... 70? My friends went to see fucking Jeff Beck and they said Jeff Beck was older than fuck. God rest his soul. I'm not here to insult nobody, but they say he couldn't even move. He just stood up there playing, you know. Uh, look what happened with my man, Mick Mars. He's done. You know, and I fucking love that motherfucker. That motherfucker could shred. He looks like a fucking old geezer, but he could fu he could <laughs> shred, bro. That dude could fucking shred. But that's it. It's the end. And, and if you look at what's coming up, what do we got left? What do we got left? We got David Grohl. We got those guys. I mean, big bands, you mean? Right? What, what do we... Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can't... I could see Guns still being out there, but they got to put out new music eventually. Yeah. They have to support their next tour with something. Something. Somebody's got to light themselves on fire. Something. I mean, I really appreciate that. I love fucking Guns N' Roses, but they're starting to get... You know, every day you go in your car and there's Paradise City... I'm waiting for, and I, I, I have tried putting on like uh, Use Your Illusion, like on YouTube when I'm writing or something, it's reading. Over. Yeah, go through the whole thing. You know, Pearl Jam still throwing heat. Yeah. I wish they could figure out a way to get Soundgarden back, but I, nobody wants to see yeah. Garden Sound without Chris Cornell. That's, that's just a stupid idea, Joey. <laughs> uh, Alice in Chains is still throwing heat. I'm going to see with you. We're going to see Rudy May 2nd at NJ Pack. He's got like eight tickets for us. He said to give you two of them. Uh, you know, now I feel bad. I feel bad about the attitude I had the last 10 years. Uh, living in L.A., you know, I tried to go see Michael Shankner every fucking year. And I always had a stupid fucking date when he came to town. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, and I just, I put, I put comedy and I let... Uh, stand up, get in the way of my music career for a long fucking time. You know, I'm a big music guy. <clears throat> music is, music lifts my spirits. There's times I'm down. <clears throat> I could smoke a half a number and put an album on <clears throat> and I'm brand, brand the fuck new. I mean, it's it, music just, uh, it really affects who the fuck I am. You know, I like coming back every once in a while. Sometimes I don't even play the music. I just look through the albums, and it gives me the strength of 10 dead Iranians. I just fucking, you know, I'll, I'll read the wall of fucking... <laughs> it's Monday, motherfuckers. What do you want? We got a big fucking week this week, man, if you really think about it. You got a big sports week. I know a lot of you motherfuckers are getting ready for the Super Bowl, what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat. I'm going to eat some mushrooms. I just gave Mike a little five-man package. Let me see that motherfucking bag right here. These things are tremendous. Sillies are fucking taking over. They also have chocolate now. Now, I 
gotten some chocolate mushrooms in town here. They taste like dick, okay? <laughs> Dog, you got to taste Silly's chocolate. They taste so fucking good. The chocolate's like Guadarelli, Guadalajara. What's that fucking chocolate? Giardelli. It's like that, guys. <laughs> That's how good the chocolate is. And it's shiny. It's dark chocolate, cacao, which is good for you. You know, they, they yeah. even for my age, they said you should eat some cacao. Dark cocoa, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Once or twice a week, the dark. Don't eat regular chocolate. Eat dark chocolate. So, yeah, I'm going to eat some fuck. I got some shrooms saved for the Super Bowl. Uh, it's a big night Saturday night. You got my man fucking Bolinowski. I got Mikkelshoff, whatever. The, you know, I'm not going with Russian names. Whatever the fuck. I, I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Uh, you got fucking Super Bowl, the over, the under. You got so many games going on. And listen, guys, I love working for DraftKings. I love fucking DraftKings. But let's get something straight. I am not here telling you to fucking place a bet or whatever. I'm telling you, read my words. I'm telling you to have fun. Everything has an entertainment value. It's the value you put on it. Okay? If you want to spend 800 for Roger Waters, go ahead. Some people look at me and they go, I'll give 200 for that communist. After that, I don't want to listen. I ain't paying a dime over that shit. You know? It's the same thing with having a good time. If you want to have a good time, what do you want to do? You want to go get steaks and people jumping up and down and bitches flying through the air? You got to go for the $150 steak. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. So for me, Doug, I get, when I was a kid and I used to gamble because that's what you do when you're an idiot. You gamble and you lose. That's one thing. But when you play, you know what the things are and you know this is just, this is just a game. $25 isn't going to affect my family. If I bet a game for 25 bucks, if I bet a game for 100 bucks, it will affect my family. These are the things you got to know on your own. You know, last two nights ago, there was a UFC. I didn't, nothing. Me now, I'm into college basketball. If I see something I like, Ohio State or something, 25 bucks. It's entertainment. Sometimes I even check to see what's on TV at night. And if there's a game coming on, I'll just. Try my fucking basketball knowledge for 25 bucks. You know, uh, I love them as a company. They got great customer service. And I've been with them for three years. I think I've been with them for four. I was, a, uh, I was with them a year before I even started working with them. Like, I enjoyed them. I had tried a couple of different companies, but I really like fucking DraftKings, and that's why I ended up partnering up with them. So uh, they're going to have some great things going on for the Super Bowl. Don't forget... If you're in Jersey, fucking uh, Stoner Club, you want to be prepared. I'm going to try to get them some fucking uh, laughing gas by the Super Bowl. I promise you, motherfuckers. But tomorrow's Anything Go Monday. Today is Anything Go Monday. You get like 10% off all your orders. Give them a stonerclub.com and uh, use Uncle Joey. And that's it, motherfuckers. It's a great Monday. I'm great. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy for you motherfuckers. My Patreon is at the best point I've ever had them. They're all normal. For years, I had all these crazy people talking about the weather and shit. Nah, I got people with real problems, that, and we communicate. It's fucking great on there. Uh, and that's it, guys. I'm just having a good time and uh, slinging dick and giving out chopsticks. That's what we do around here on Uncle Joey's Joint. So stay black. Have a great week. And here's uh, a word from our sponsors, cocksuckers. See you next Monday morning after the Super Bowl. All right, you bad motherfuckers. Thank you for letting me talk about Ozzy today. I just thought that uh, it's what threw me off the boat last week. But I'm back, bitches. Thank you for supporting me. Before I got to get out of here, listen. This episode was sponsored by BetterHelp. When you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. I was with BetterHelp for at least a year, and they took me out of my funk and put me in the right place. Dana did a great job. BetterHelp is a therapy option that is really convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. You don't even have to live, leave your house. Just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime with no additional charge. It couldn't be any easier, right? If you want to live a more empowered life and have control of your life, let betterhelp.com slash Diaz get you there. And when you sign up today, I'm going to get you 10% off your first month, all right? That's betterhelp.com slash Diaz. The joint is also brought to you by...
Rocket Money, formerly known as True Bill. You're paying too much for your subscriptions. You don't even know what the hell you got out there. Cable bills, this, that, masseuses. That's why I love Rocket Money. Formerly known as True Bill. The app shows you all your subscriptions in one place and cancels whatever ones you don't want. It's that easy. They can even find the ones you didn't even know you had. So you may even find out you're being double charged. How's that for you? Download Rocket Money today. Right now, just press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money right now. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Joey. Seriously, I'm going to save you hundreds per year and you're going to really love me then, you little dirty animals. That's rocketmoney.com slash Joey. Cancel your unnecessary subscriptions right now at rocketmoney.com slash Joey. And the joint is also brought to you by, listen, Either you're going to get the party started this weekend or you're not. We're talking about two fights and then a tremendous football game. In fact, the biggest one of the year on Sunday. And you're sitting here looking around like, what am I doing this weekend? Listen, I got it all planned out for you. You're going to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. They're an official sports betting partner in the UFC. You can't go wrong. New customers, you bet $5, I'm going to get you 200 in bonus bets right there just for the signing up. That's how Uncle Joey does it. And if the excitement of the octagon isn't enough, if seeing some guy's eyeball fly out of his head ain't good for you, get the big game happening on Sunday at DraftKings Sportsbook and DraftKings Fantasy app. Download the app now. Use code Joey. New customers better fin to get in. $5 on UFC 284 and get 200 in bonus bets instantly. This Saturday, DraftKings Sportsbook, code Joey, J-O-E-Y. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. I want to thank Rocket Money. I want to thank DraftKings. And I want to thank BetterHelp for always having my back. But I want to thank you motherfuckers. Stay black. Have a great week. Uncle Joey loves you.